My name is Curtis Silva. I am the social and digital media manager here at My Credit Guy. And if you're joining us today, you know that our topic is all about credit cards. Um, I'm, ex I'm pretty excited to talk about this because um, this is something that I believe trips a lot of people up. Um, none of us re really ever got a credit card education in high school or college or anything like that, which is exactly why we brought a couple of experts in here. Uh, we have Crystal Gearman here, who is one of our account executives here at My Credit Guy. And then we also have Rose Gomes here with us as well. She is one of our credit coach managers. We're excited to have Rose. There was one thing that really um, sparked my interest in this topic, and I just have to share this really quick. And Rose is actually going to kind of go into this a little bit more as she shares her advice. But um, I had a credit card that was open for, man, several, several years, and I totally, um, I, I, I totally screwed up. I, I let the the, his, um, the credit card close out. Um, I didn't realize that it, I had a late pay, and it, it closed out. And then I was sharing this story with one of my friends and they said that the exact same thing happened to them. So I was like, we have got to do a webinar about this. There have got to be multiple people who are like, I didn't know that about credit cards. I let this happen. So um, I want to get into the, the, the credit side first here. And Rose is going to kind of lead us down that path. Um, so Rose, do you have any, um, any tips for us about building credit with credit cards? I know that's kind of an area you were going to help us focus on today as far as credit cards. Go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So credit cards are kind of um, a, a necessary evil, right? You need them to build those nice, healthy scores. Um, credit card utilization makes up 30% of your, your credit score. Um, and then to touch on that, 35% of it is your payment history. So <laughs> it's really, really important to stay on time with your payments. Um, you know, keep those balances nice and low. We call it the sweet spot between five to 10% of that credit card limit. So for example, your credit card limit is at is $200, right? Every single month you wanna make sure that you have a charge on it of $10 to 20 bucks. Every single month, pay it off to a zero balance once you get that statement in the mail. So it reports to the credit bureaus um, and then just continue that cycle every single month. Yep. And the easiest way to do that is, uh -huh. oh, go ahead, sorry. Well, I was just going to kind of, um, so, so your advice there is to not only keep that balance at a certain limit, but then also to use the credit card consistently. Yep. You want to use that card consistently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. So the easiest way to do that is, you know, everybody has Netflix, everyone has Hulu, um, Amazon Prime, my Amazon Prime is $13.99 a month. You know, you're going to link it to one of those cards, let it auto process, only use it for that purpose, pay it off to zero every single month once you get that statement. Yep. So what, I guess, what's the, the direct benefit or advantage of kind of setting up um, that credit card on, on that, on that payment schedule? Like what, what are the, the direct benefits that somebody's getting by having that payment just happen automatically? Well, you're building that payment history. Right. So that's mm -hmm. going to help help your scores um, <clears throat> and you're utilizing it because when you think of of your credit, it's kind of a it's there to judge you, so to speak. <laughs> it wants to see how well you are when you borrow money. So that's the quickest way to play the game is utilize those credit cards, um, you know, use it to your advantage. Setting up on auto pay ensures too that you're not late on the account. So I always tell people put it on auto pay. That way you don't have to worry about it. You have these, you know, these charges that come out every single month, right? Because you're putting Hulu, Netflix, whatever. Then you put it on auto pay for that amount. And then you just leave it alone. The only time you have to change that is gotcha. if like, you know, you, your address change, you update something like that. Maybe your bank account changes that you have connected to auto pay for the card. That's when you have to remember, oh, I got to do that. But, um, you know, if, if it's on auto pay, it makes the, the chance of being late on it significantly lower because it's just going to auto pull it out of your account. And by keeping that smaller balance, it also makes it super easy to make sure you're making that payment because when you keep those higher balances, that minimum payment starts being, you know, more every single month. And then sometimes you can't pay it back. So keeping those small balances, setting up on auto pay, putting it away, not touching it, that's going to, that's going to give you the best uh, opportunity to increase those scores and, uh, you know, not make mistakes with it. <laughs> 
Perfect. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty neat strategy there. Cause like you kind of just like set it up and then walk away. And I mean, like you're, you're still paying the money, right. But you're, you're kind of building that credit simultaneously without even really having to like make the payment or like having to like remember to make the payment anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's a neat little exactly. trick. Um, and you said Rose 35%, was that right? 30 or, or 35% is how much your credit card utilization uh, contributes to your credit score. 30%. 30%. Gotcha. And so there, there are five like categories, I believe, to that. And that's a big chunk. That's like a whole, that's a third of where your credit score comes from. So like, do you, do you guys know, um, like maybe like how quickly, or have you guys experienced like, um, like how quickly somebody is able to build up their credit score just by kind of applying that technique? Ooh. That's I mean, if you keep it there for like two to three months, you'll, you'll typically see anywhere from like 30 to 40 point increase, depending on where you're keeping that percentage as. And then as long as you're making the payments, because even though the utilization only impacts 30%, the payment history impacts 35%. So technically credit cards are the only account that double dip on those percentages. So that's 65% of the score. So if you're keeping a balance 20 to $30, making that on-time payment, for two to three months, you're going to see a very quick increase in those scores because it's impacting such a large portion. Because you're not only impacting the the um, credit card utilization, you're also kind of boosting your your payment history as well. Yep. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you're okay. Okay. Gotcha. So you. All right. All right. Were you about to say something, Rose? I'm sorry. No. 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 Okay. Gotcha. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> so what are some different ways? Like so. Um, I know that there are some accounts that like don't let you set up things on auto pay. Um, I know that like one way, like sometimes I set reminders in my phone to like make payments. Do you, do you guys have any tips about like how to remember to make your payments if somebody is um, worried about possibly like hitting a late pay or they know they might be vulnerable to like missing a payment? Uh, most companies will let you schedule out like two or three payments ahead of time. So if you if you do that and you pay it, you know, two to three days before the due date and schedule it out for the next three months, then you just have to remind yourself to do it again in the next three months. So it gives you a better opportunity to make sure that it is paid on time. But I typically tell people not to open accounts like that. <laughs> it's hard to know sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't know until you know, right? But uh, yeah, that's typically what I do is, you know, schedule a cup out ahead of time or um, make more than the minimum payment due mm -hmm. because then it credits for the next month too. So if your minimum payments, let's say $25 and you're making a $50 payment, you know, every single time, then you're, you're kind of catching up on that too. So it just depends on how it's a strip strategy. Mm -hmm. oh. Strategy. So I'm sure everybody's situation is a little bit different too. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of moving on here, I know Crystal had some tips lined up for us as well. Um, Crystal, did you have um, some things you wanted to share with us on top of kind of some of the things that we've already gone over? Um, I mean, I think Rose pretty much hit the nail on the head with the majority of the stuff. Um, we do offer um, a card called the Credit Builder Credit Card. It's not our card, but it's a company we partner with for people that are having a hard time getting approved for a secured card through um, some of the bigger banks. Um, so it's 100% you'll get approved for it as long as you make sure you fill out the application with all of your information because that's the number one problem why people don't get approved is because they fat fingered something, mistyped something, and they needed to identify, like they needed to verify the identity again, and then they just don't say anything back. <laughs> and so then they don't get the card. But uh, it's... Uh, it's a pretty cool card. It hits your credit report within 10 to 14 days of opening it. Um, it's a $200 um, deposit. What they do is they have a $29 annual fee that they add to the card. So the first time that card reports on the credit report, it has a $29 balance out of a $200 limit and you get an on-time payment. So a lot of times if somebody doesn't have a credit card open, the first one that they open, they're going to see a pretty good increase in scores from just this card because they went from no history, no revolving line to all of a sudden 
way under 30% and an on-time payment. So that can really bolster those scores pretty quick when they open them. And then as long as they continue to use them responsibly, you know, it creates that solid credit profile there. Um, Rose and I were actually talking about some cards that we both have. And I think my personal favorite is the Discover It card. Um, the cool thing about that is it, if you don't have the scores to get the unsecured card, they'll usually let you get the secured card because you still have to put a deposit down. Um, but it functions very similar to some of the better credit cards out there that do like cash back incentives and everything. So um, you get 5% cash back on their monthly promos. So right now, I think it's like grocery stores, CVS and Walgreens. So anytime I buy something from them, and it's a, it's a quarterly thing. So in that quarter, um, I get 5% back on what I bought. And then at the end of that cycle, I can take that money and use it to get like gift cards or what I usually do is I'll put it towards my actual bill with, uh, with Discover. So that's a pretty cool card. Um, you do have to have a little bit higher scores to get the unsecured one, but for the secured one, typically you have to have like anywhere between like a 600 to like a 640. So it's a pretty cool card. I've had it for a while. Uh, I like it. Their customer service is great. Um, and then Rose, you were talking about a card that you have. Uh, earlier. I forgot what it was though. So I have the Hawaiian Airlines card. I love to fly. <laughs> so it gives me points on that. So that's why I love it. Um, yeah, it gives me points. So I, I, I'm from Hawaii, if, you know, you didn't know. <laughs> so it gives me the opportunity to go back home more often, um, you know, because I, I put everything, I, I generally use it for a lot of my grocery shopping and I just pay it off every, every month. So Awesome. And I'm actually going to drop a link here in the comments because I know Crystal had mentioned the credit builder card. Um, that's a great way to build your credit. It's also great. Like if you don't have any credit at all, um, you mm -hmm. can, it's, it's, it's a great way to start. So whether, you know, you're 18 and you're looking for an, your very first credit card or you, you know, you're older and you have never had a credit card. Um, this is a great way to kind of get that thing, that credit uh, ball rolling. So that is in the comments. Yep. If anybody needs access to that, I've thrown that down there. Um, there, um, there are a couple states that you can't, it's not available in. Um, I know it's Iowa, Wisconsin, I think Kentucky, New York. and there's New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you live in any of those states, it has something to do with like their banking restrictions and all that stuff. We don't really know too much in detail. We just know it's not available there, but there are other cards that um, we do send out to our clients. It's the same functionality. Um, they don't hit the credit report as fast, um, but a lot of them kind of function the same way too. So if you're in one of those states, um, you know, you can open one of those ones to help, you know, boost that credit. Most of the time, the, the people that don't get approved on them, again, it comes down to, they didn't fill out that application all the way. Um, Side note, filling out the application has to be done on a computer, not on like a phone or a tablet because there's a section that's missing. So you'll hit submit, that section's empty, then that triggers the additional identification process. And that's where we get stuck where people are like, well, I filled it out, but I haven't heard anything back. Uh, so yeah, computers gotcha. on that one. <laughs> gotcha. Well, that's good to know. That's good. I mean, that would that would really suck to kind of get to that form and be like, hey, this is not what I expected. That'd be terrible user experience. So thank you for that. Yep. Crystal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, on top of on top of that, um, if anybody I mean, because credit cards are just such a small part of credit, right? Um, it's just a fraction. And if I know that questions about credit can kind of go any which way. So if you have other questions, um, even outside of how to use your credit cards, um, questions about your credit, um, I'm going to drop another link here in the comments. Um, you can fill out that form and get in touch with us that way, or you can always send us a message on Facebook. Um, either way is just fine. We would be happy to get back to you and kind of um, solve any problems that you, um, you have for us or um, any what we'd be happy to talk about any questions that you have. Um, I'm going to ask Crystal or Rose if they have anything else to add before we sign off. Um, can you think of any, any last really. things you'd like to leave our viewers with before we? Keep those balances low and pay things on time. Yep. One late payment <laughs> is really bad. 
If you have mm-hmm. to use more than 30% on the card, it's okay. It's not, it's not a deal breaker because as long as that balance starts getting lower, you know, you'll, you'll gain those points back. But if you make a late payment that does damage and it's really hard to get late payments that are accurate removed. So even if you're just making that minimum monthly payment, make that payment, keep working on getting that balance down. Don't use the card for anything and just make sure you're paying it on time. Cause we can get the points back for the balance being too high. It's very hard to get late payments removed, especially off credit cards. Good advice. Good advice. All right. Well, thank you guys both for your time. I appreciate you jumping on here and sharing some of your wisdom. Um, hope to have you yeah. guys back on here in the near future. And uh, hope you enjoy Thanks for the rest having of us. Day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.